Welcome to this Property Hub University course on how to invest when you have no time. I'm Rob D. I'm joined by Rob B. And this is such an important course because time is so often a barrier to investing in property. People know that property investment can be life changing, but they feel that they can't do it or can't do it to their full potential because they've just got too many other demands on their time. Well, in this course, we're going to remove that barrier for you. So we're going to start out by talking about how to choose an appropriate strategy. If you don't have much time, certain strategies will, being realistic, be off limits. We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk through every part of the property investment process and how to outsource every aspect of it. So the research, the acquisition and the management. You don't have to get rid of all of those, but there are options of passing each of those over. And we're going to talk through some options that you've got for each of those. And then we're going to wrap up by talking about general principles for how to make the most of your limited time. If you are a busy, busy person, then you're going to need to make sure that the time that you do, you are spending is being used as wisely as you possibly could. So all of that coming up in this course. But before we get going, it's reality check time. Some people will feel they can accomplish anything in property, which I admire. I like that mindset. And while I'm sure you can, you have to understand a few things. One, do you have the time? Some investments are more time consuming than others. You know, if you want to flip properties, are you realistically going to find them, execute that strategy, get them sold as quickly as you'd like if you work 60 hours a week and have family and kids and commitments at the weekends? Probably not. So there's a few things you need to consider here before you get going with any of this is the time that you can personally invest, the cash that you can invest, and one of the most important things is what are you good at and what do you enjoy? If you are trying to do refurbs by yourself and you're rubbish at DIY, it's not a good match. Be self-aware, understand what your strengths are, double down on those, and also where your enjoyment comes as well. If you are rubbish at DIY, you don't like doing DIY and you're time poor, then doing flips yourself is not going to work. So understand your situation. You may have not considered outsourcing any part of the process in property investment, but the good news is you can outsource it from start to finish and focus on the things that you are good at in life, whatever they may be. So let's start off with one of those first areas that you're going to come to in property, wherever your strategy, and that's the research before you actually get going. The research, or as I like to call it, the fun bit. I love doing research. <laughs> research is awesome. I love spending lots of time on right move pretending I'm working. I know you do too, Rob. No high ground for you on yeah, this. I do. But if you do not share my love of research, or if you really are pushed for time, then you can pass this over to someone else. And even I, even though I love this stuff, do pass some of this over because I just don't have the time. And this course is called How to Invest in Property When You Have No Time. So the easiest way to pass this over is to take on an assistant. Now, an assistant doesn't necessarily mean somebody who's going to come and sit next to you all day and be employed by you formally. We're going to talk about some different ways in a minute of actually finding an assistant and the types of ways of working that relationship. But let's start by looking at what they can do. They can do basically everything that you would do if you're doing it yourself. So they could conduct research. So they could conduct research online or they could get on the phone to estate agents, letting agents, all that kind of thing to find out things like how much houses are selling for in a particular type of area, um, what the rents are like, what level of rental demand there is. All these kind of things that normally in the course of making an investment you would start out by doing, you can get someone else to do it. You could also get them to find properties for you to view. So you could give them a set of criteria and say, go and um, go on to Rightmove and find me properties that are within a certain price bracket that have this particular feature that will give me this level of return. Whatever you want to go and look at, you can get them to filter through all the hundreds and thousands of properties and just find the ones that are most appropriate for you to view based on the criteria you've given. You can then take it a step further and you can get them to book these viewings in for you. Now, if you've ever done this yourself, you'll know that it's an annoying and time consuming process having to book in viewings because you're going to have to call each estate agent 
You're going to have to have a conversation with them. You might have to give over information if you haven't registered with them already. You're then going to have to say when you can view. Possibly they'll say, oh, let me look into that. They'll call you back. It goes on and on all day. And it's a real hassle trying to make this work, especially if you're trying to batch viewings together so you can do as many as you can in a morning, say. You don't have to do any of that. It's really, really easy for somebody else to be given a list of properties and you just have to say, I want to go and see all of these on Saturday. Please book in these viewings as close together as possible and send me a list of what I'm seeing when. That's it. All of that can be done for you. And once you've done those viewings, they can follow up with the estate agents for you as well. So if you're putting in offers, and this is something that we talk about a lot, your first offer will probably get rejected if you're making a sufficiently low offer. But that doesn't mean that that offer isn't going to become interesting at some point. So if the property just sits on the market for weeks and weeks, it could be that suddenly they're thinking, oh, well, maybe your offer now, it seems low at the time, but maybe it's actually pretty realistic. And if they can move fast, we'll go with it. You would have thought that in this scenario, the estate agent would have kept a note of your detail and what your offer was and will call you back, but they won't. That will never happen. Instead, you need to be following up. So you can get somebody else to do that. You can just say to them every week, call and follow up on these properties and reiterate that I'm still interested and see if it's sold yet. That's another thing that can be done. So all of these, any aspect of this or all of them can be done by someone else. So if you're anything like us, you're probably getting quite excited now at the thought of having an assistant. And let me tell you, you should be because they will change your life for the better if you get it right. So where do you find these wonderful people? Well, there are more than one place you'll be pleased to know you can go to. You can try Upwork.com, which is a bit like a marketplace for people who are looking for just bits and pieces of work. You can go on there, look for a virtual assistant. It's probably the the term you're going to use, and place your job advert. It doesn't cost any money to place your ad. Upwork will take a fee instead each hour from the person you employ. So there's no upfront cost to you whatsoever. Lots of people on there, but make sure that you get them to jump through a few hoops for the recruitment process because you will get hundreds of applications. Make sure you're very clear on the criteria of the type of person that you want working for you. You will have to consider things like time zones. A lot of people will apply outside of the UK, which can have its advantages. It may cost you less, but has its disadvantages if you want them to be calling state agents and while the state agents are awake, they're asleep. So just bear that in mind. If you want to look closer to home, you can have a look at a website called workingmums.co.uk. It's a great website. You do have to pay for your advert and it will cost you the best part of a couple of hundred pounds. But you're going to get a really, really high quality of applicant there. And if you want somebody that's UK based, then lots of UK mums are working on there looking for work to do from home. Real, real source of talent there. You may be able to find something closer to home. You may already know somebody who wants a bit of part-time work, just wants to work a few hours a week, and is pretty switched on. They could possibly do it as well. There are multiple options. We've just given you you know, a selection. There's other websites like Fiverr.com as well. There's so many but be very clear on what you want. Have a good recruitment process and be very clear on the role and the expectations of the role so you get the right person in to do the work. Yeah, you can achieve absolutely brilliant things. You can find a wonderful person, but they're not a magician and they're not a mind reader. There will still be things that you need to do to maximize the chance of this being a successful relationship. Because however good the person is, if you just kind of say, um, I'm a property investor, I want you to find stuff for me, go. You're not going to get a good result. You need to give them the best chance of success and then keep them on track. So the first thing to do is to know your criteria. So if you are looking at getting them to do research um, in terms of different areas, in terms of different things you could buy, in terms of lining up viewings, you need to know what it is that you want. If you don't know what you're looking for, you can't possibly explain it to them and therefore they won't be able to find it for you. So this isn't something to do right at the very beginning before you have any clue of what it is that you want. You need to have some criteria for them to work from. You'll also have the most success 
if you have a clear process for them to follow. So this can vary depending on where you've hired the person from and frankly, how much you're paying them. So if you've used a site like Upwork and you're paying someone on the other side of the world a few dollars an hour, realistically, they're not going to be able to have the background knowledge and to use the initiative in the same way as somebody who is living in the UK, knows the background and might have relevant experience in that kind of industry. But whoever it is, some kind of process really helps. So you don't have to do it this way, but it will work best if you start out doing it yourself just for long enough to work out how it all works, write down the steps and then pass it over. So rather than, you know, you've never gone on a right move before, you have no idea how it works and you just say, go do this for me. It's better if you have done it yourself to the point that you can write down step one, Go to the site. Step two, filter for this kind of thing. Step three, go down the list and note down this. So they can just follow that process. It doesn't have to be a written process. You could record a video of you doing it or you could talk them through it on the phone. But however you do it, if they've got a process to follow, they will get better results. You'll also need, once they're up and running, a system to keep them organized. So again, Some people will be more organized than others and chances are you've tried to hire somebody who seems like an organized kind of person because that's a big part of this sort of role. But they're still far more likely to succeed if they've been given a system that keeps them on track. And later on, we'll talk about some tech tools that you can use to make that happen. And once you've given them that process and that system, they're off and running. They're hopefully doing a great job, but they're going to need feedback from you. So it's very difficult as an employee of any kind, if you're just kind of left to do something, you don't really know whether you're doing a good job, whether your work is being used, whether you're doing it as well as you can. So giving regular feedback is very important. Taking the time to look at what they're doing and either say, yep, that's great, or to make suggestions for how they can do better. And if it's more than just you've got someone a couple of hours a week doing really basic stuff, then having regular reviews is a good idea too. This can be anything from like a weekly or a monthly call, a formal check-in, or it could be something as simple as every day they send you a list of everything that they've been doing and you send something back. However you do it, it's really important to have these three things, the process, the system, and the feedback. Those things together will give you the best chance of having a successful relationship. And the more effort you put in, the more likely you are to get the results you want. And ultimately, that makes your life a lot easier. And it means that your property research will be done successfully with far less time input from you than you would have needed if you were doing it all yourself. Don't let this put you off. There may be some people now going, well, actually, I may as well just do it myself if I take the time to set all that up. And that's where so many people fail. They'll go, oh, I'll just carry on doing it myself. But the thing is, Five years later, 10 years later, you're still doing it yourself. Taking the time, that little bit of extra effort and work at the beginning to get these things set up and right will start to pay dividends for the rest of your life with any outsourcing. Do this right, and then you will be so thankful to yourself that you did. It will make a huge difference. So don't let it put you off. Get it done. It's done once, and it pays off for a lifetime. Now, cement your learning by taking the quiz. Then we'll move on to the next module. Okay, so you've outsourced the research stage. It's now time to look at outsourcing acquisition. You can get helps with part of the process by bringing in somebody to just do a bit of the role, and we'll talk about that shortly. Or you can get a company to outsource the whole thing by using a specialist sourcing agent or company. Again, the companies and agents will do different levels of service and you have to understand what they are, but you can get somebody to do a bit or you can get somebody to do it all. Okay, so let's look at the first option there. So you're not handing the whole thing over to a company and saying, find me a property. You just want to help with a specific aspect. And let's look at the different things that you could get help with. So you could get someone to find the properties for you. So this is kind of an overlap from the research stage. You could get somebody remote to do that, or you could find someone local who knows the area to find properties for you. You could get help with actually viewing the properties. So especially if you're operating in an area that isn't that close to where you live, you might find it more convenient rather than doing the viewings yourself to get somebody else to view those properties. 
And this is where it comes back to process again. If you've put together a checklist for them, they can just go through and use that checklist to note down everything that you need to know about the property. They can take photos of it and then pass all that through to you. And that means that all the information that matters to you for your decision making is captured. Without a checklist, they could just go and see it and go, yeah, nice property. But that's not very helpful to you. So that can be outsourced as well. And also, you could get somebody else to price up refurbs for you. So if you've got a local contact who's a builder or is just experienced at doing DIY and that sort of thing, or is a retired tradesperson, then they could actually go and price up potential refurbs for you to save you doing it yourself. So these are all parts of the process where, first of all, you might think, really, can you really get somebody else to do that? And yes, you can. It might seem weird, the idea of not viewing a property yourself. I'm not saying you can't view it yourself at any point, you don't have to, but somebody else can be that first filter for you to save you time. It's far more efficient for somebody else to go and look at 10 properties and weed out the nine that are no good than it is for you to do that yourself. Because then even if you do go and view it, you only have to go and see one property that you know ticks all the boxes instead of 10. So if you are going to outsource some of these acquisition steps, how do you do it? Well, you're going to need someone local for the majority of this. And there are various ways of finding people locally. One of those ways is Gumtree. In some areas, Gumtree is very active. So in London, Gumtree is huge. There's loads of personal ads on there. In other areas, not so much. But if it is active in your area, that's a good place to look. Another good place to look is streetlife.com. It's like a local social network. So people post on there about all sorts of things, whether it's local events or things to buy and sell or donate or whatever it is, loads of things on there. So there are going to be plenty of people on there who will either be able to recommend tradespeople or will know somebody who's looking for a bit of extra work. There'll be a fair few retired people on there who are maybe just looking for a few hours of work a week and have relevant skills or experience. And then there's things like the local paper and there's adverts in shop windows and all that sort of thing. Things that are a bit more old school, but they do work. There are lots of different local networks that you can tap into. And it sounds like a bit of work. And it is. Of course it is. Finding the right person is effort. But like Rob said before, once you've gone through that process, it means a whole load of stuff you never need to go again. So you might be able to view 20 properties in the time it takes you to find somebody uh, to go and do it for you. But okay, once you've done that, you then never have to go and see a property ever again. And you're saving time every single week for the rest of the time that you're investing in property. So it's well worth the upfront investment of time. So the other option you have available to you is to use a sourcing agent. Now, this could be a individual, it could be a company, and they could do different things for you. So if you want a HMO, there are companies and individuals out there that can help you through the steps because, you know, it is a bit of faff getting them up and running and finding the right properties to make that model work. Or if you just want a great deal and you want a property that's below market value, so that's buying it for cheaper than the market says it's worth. Well, again, as you'd expect, that's not easy to do. You'd want to do it, but it's not easy to do. So there are companies and individuals out there who can help you do that. You can find them everywhere. You can go online. You can go on forums. There are local property networking events that you can ask for recommendations. Finding them won't be difficult. In fact, many of them will try and find you, especially at networking events. You have to be careful because people go there just to try and find clients. Now, don't worry at the property hub meetups they're friendly and there's a no selling policy so you'll be fine there but at other networking events you may come under some pressure be careful though be wary of people like that if they're that good do they have to use pressure tactics they will add a fee to the purchase price but that's fine if it's a good deal then it's worth paying for so let me give you an example if somebody finds you a deal that's twenty thousand pounds cheaper than the market value you agree with that because you've done your research and they want to charge you two to four thousand pounds for that, well then it's still a no-brainer because you've made that excess cash by buying well. But do your research, and that's really the most important point here. Research the company and then research their research. So one, are they a good company? Unfortunately, as I've already kind of hinted at, 
There are many people out there that you wouldn't want to work with and many companies that you wouldn't want to work with as well. Great marketing doesn't mean great service. So do your research, ask around, look on Google, page one, two, three, and four, and make sure they've got a good reputation. And then once you're comfortable with them as a group of people or as an individual, then research their research. They may believe it that that deal is as good as it is. And that's fine. That's good. Because if you've researched them, then they shouldn't be lying to you because you trust them. But they may have made a mistake. So research their research. If you research the company and then research their research, you're in a stronger place. You can trust the people once you've done that, but also validate that trust at all times. That's a really important lesson is trust, but validate. Research them so you can trust them. And once you've got the trust, research their research and you can have a winning relationship. But don't cut corners. Your time is well spent on the research part. Now cement your learning by taking a quiz. Then we'll move on to the next module. Okay, so we talked about how to outsource the research, how to outsource the acquisition. Now, what about the management? Well, outsourcing the management of the property once you've actually bought it and you've got it ready to let out, that's the easy bit because that's what letting agents are for. So if you want to outsource the management of the property, then just use a letting agent. It really is that simple, but that doesn't mean that you can just pick the first letting agent that you chance across on the high street. You need to make sure that they're good. There are very, very good letting agents and there are very, very bad letting agents. And you are going to remain responsible legally for all of this, whatever happens. So you need to make sure that they're good. How do you do that? Well, as always, recommendations are the best. If there's somebody who you know who has been using a letting agent for years and has no complaints, that's pretty good. There are websites that review agents, but they can be tricky because you've got lots of tenants on there having gripes about agents, but actually it could be the landlord who has, uh, was causing the problem that they were complaining about. But you might find it useful to look at those. And you can also look at certain markers. Um, so you can, first of all, make sure that they are members of an ombudsman scheme because they have to be. So if they're not doing that, then that's not a good sign. You can check that they have got client money protection. That means that any money that they hold on your behalf, like deposits and rent ready to pass over, is protected. And you can look for whether they are members of a trade body like ARLA, which means that they have certain training and they abide by a certain code of practice. And you can just go in and quiz them as well. So if you know your stuff, which hopefully you will, if you have watched some of our courses, listened to the podcast, spent some time on the Property Hub, and you can go in there and ask intelligent questions and you can see what their answers are like. If they seem to be really inexperienced, then okay, you might have just picked a poor member of the team, picked someone who's new. Maybe someone else is going to, the company is more experienced, but it's not a great sign. And that could be the person who ends up doing all your tenancy paperwork and making a mistake that really costs you. So again, like a bit of a theme we've talked about, spend some time making sure that you find the right person. That any time that you spend making sure that you've got the right relationship will be paid back many times over. Once you've found that agent, give them an approved spend limit. So you don't have to do this, but it does really help if you just say, you know, anything up to £100 or £200 that needs fixing, just go ahead and do it. You don't have to come to me. That means that lots of small, not that significant things don't even come by you at all. You don't even have to look at an email about it, get a call about it, anything. It gets taken care of. They spend the money for you and then they reclaim it from the rent or from a float. If it's a big expenditure, of course, you want to know about it. You want to check and see the quotes and all that sort of thing. But it's very handy to just be able to say, if it's small, don't worry about it, just go ahead. And that means it's better for the tenant as well because they'll get things done more quickly. And that kind of relates to a general principle of don't sweat the small stuff. So if you've outsourced the management, so you're paying somebody else to do it, it's then not a good use of your time to be managing the manager. So if you're watching them constantly and you're always emailing to say, have you done this? Have you done that? What's happening? Then you might as well just be doing it yourself because you're using up the same amount of time and you're paying for it at the same time. Realistically, when you pass it over, things aren't always going to be done exactly as you would do it. And perhaps there'll be a quote for some maintenance. And if you spent an entire day ringing around, you could get it 50 quid cheaper. But is that a good use of your time? 
that's for you to decide. But once you've decided whether to do it yourself or whether to outsource, stick with it. If you've outsourced, don't then keep jumping in yourself. Try to mentally step away and leave them to it. Step in if you need to, but most of the time you can just leave it. Things will sort themselves out. It might not be exactly as you would have done it, but it will be good enough. And with that time that you've freed up, you can go and do something that you enjoy or you can go and do something that you're really good at that adds load of value. Time is our greatest asset. Yeah, it gets thrown around a lot. It sounds like a bit of a cliche, but you know the funny thing about cliches are most of them are true and it is. Time is so important. So identify what you're best at and do more of that. And you know what? If that's not property, then do something else. Take advantage of property and get people to do the work for you so you can get the fruits of what property can bring. But if it's not your skill set, then don't force yourself into doing it. Because one, you probably won't enjoy it. And two, you probably won't do it as well as someone else can. So outsource everything that you either don't enjoy or you're not best at because you'll become more efficient and you'll become a more efficient investor. Working with professionals is key to making this happen. So all the way from really switched on assistants to a great property sourcing company to a really high quality letting agent, if you pick the right people, your life will be so much easier. And you can treat this as very much a part-time thing that takes up very little of your time each and every month. Property investment doesn't have to take over your life. It can change your life for the better, but you don't have to sink hours and hours and hours in every day, every week, every month. You can literally take care of a whole portfolio with a couple of hours every month. And you can do that by using systems. Rob and I talk about super cool tools you can use every single week on a property podcast. We've mentioned things like Evernote, Trello, Dropbox, Google Drive. There's so much out there that you can use to make your life easier. But remember, don't get dragged into the details. The reason you're probably investing in property is for a big picture reason, something that in the future is going to have a positive impact on your life and possibly other people's lives too. If you get buried in the detail, then it's going to take you longer to get there. So if it doesn't suit you or you don't like it, get professionals in to take care of it for you. And if you pick the right ones, it will make your life a lot easier. So that brings us to the end of this course. We've looked at researching, acquisition, management, and some pretty cool tools that'll help you along the way. It's really important that you take action now and use this information. You may want to consider using some of the services we offer through the Property Hub, Property Hub Invest and Property Hub Lets. Or you may want to go alone and get stuck in yourself. You could consider hiring a VA and get them to start working for you. Wherever you decide, Look at the most time-consuming task or the part of the process that you enjoy the least and start with that. Take baby steps to experiment with outsourcing. And if you follow what we've covered in this course, you'll quickly see results. Now, just take the final quiz and collect your badge for completing this course. Then get started on another one.